error code E500 and error code E470. Today I'm working on a Samsung unit. I've got two error codes. I'm going to explain what each error code means and what you should do if you have this error code. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's get started. So error code E500 means main inverter PCB is overheating. I got this on a brand new startup after doing the commissioning process. With this unit, I commission it using the indoor wireless remote controller going through the buttons. That's how you commission. Upon commission, I got this error code and I knew that the inverter PCB was overheating by looking at SamsungHVAC.com downloads or you can just refer to the installation manual. You've got error codes there listed in the descriptions. So what I wanna do first is I wanna take the top off. I wanna check the inverter board. First thing I wanna check is make sure the screws are tightened because if the inverter board screws are not tightened properly and it's not against that heat sink, it's not gonna be able to dissipate the heat so it's gonna overheat. So the second thing I need to check if the, the screws are tightened is I need to take the screws out, flip the inverter board over, and I need to make sure there's thermal paste. If you do not know what inverter board looks like or what thermal paste is, I'm gonna put a video in the link in the description so you can learn more about what thermal paste is, how to put it on, why it's important, and what an inverter board looks like. So, so go check out that video. So after I checked and made sure that there was thermal paste and that the inverter board screws were tightened, I checked and made sure all the connections were connected properly. That means all the wires leading to the compressor and the outdoor fan and some other uh, plugs. Made sure all that was good. Then I got a voltmeter. I got my meter, turn turned it to volts AC and checked the incoming power source. Made sure that it was within range. Then I knew I had a bad inverter board. So I ordered an inverter board. I got it in, put it in, and my inverter board that was new fixed the problem. So the error code E500 disappeared. Now I no longer have that error code. And I'm gonna show you SNET tool and under the code section where you can actually look at those error codes if you do have SNET. We'll talk a little bit about how to option code as well because that leads me to the next error code. The next error code I had was E470. And I'm gonna show you what that means. That means outdoor EEPROM uh, error. So I'll show you that and then we'll get to the next steps, okay? So the first code was E500 and you can see it says uh, inverter PCB overheat error. The next code after replacing that board was outdoor unit EEPROM read or write error. So we have an issue with our EEPROM now for that outdoor unit and I'm gonna talk to you about what I did to solve that issue. So if you have an outdoor EEPROM error, you need to get an SRC file. It's not like writing the option code for the indoor unit. For the indoor unit, I can go to VRF Coder and I can get all the option codes I need. For the outdoor unit, I have to have an SRC file. And I'm gonna show you how I was able to write that option and correct the issue and now my unit works properly. But what I did to get the SRC file is I called Samsung Tech Support. They were able to email me the SRC file. I was able to connect my phone because I don't have internet out here. I was able to connect my phone via USB to USB-C to my computer and I was able to take that SRC file from my phone and transfer it into my computer. Then I was able to use SNET tool to be able to write that option and now I no longer have the EEPROM error. I no longer have E470. I'm going to show you how SNET tool is used to write that outdoor EEPROM so that if you have this issue then you need to get that SRC file but you'll be able to use the SNET tool to fix it. Here is the SNET program and there's the error codes. How do I get to the error code manual? I click help right here and then I click error codes. So that's how you get to the error codes. Once you've got SNET Pro 2 up and running you're going to go to add on, you're going to go to outdoor EEPROM write, then you're going to select the address, and then you're going to open, oh, you're going to open option file, okay? Once you open the option file, I had mine on the desktop. So I'll go to where it says desktop, click this right here, and you can see I've got the DB82. Click it. Okay, now it's uploaded here. You're gonna hit right option, okay? Once you hit right option, 
it's going to say downloading and then eventually success. Now I'm going to talk about how I hooked up the SNET and then problems you can have. Sometimes when you write the option using the SRC file, sometimes it's not always successful and you may have to do it twice. And what I always do once I do it once, if it's not successful, I do it again. And then usually it, it's successful. It downloads properly. And then I'll take and I'll disconnect from SNET and then I will unplug or disconnect the power from the unit for about 15 minutes and then plug it back in and then my error code E470 goes away. I'm going to show you where that error code usually is on SNET and then talk about how to hook net SNET up just in case you don't know. So from the USB cord here into the SNET tool, this is a USB RS-232 to RS-485. You can see there's two wires that come out. And then over here on the outdoor unit itself, I've got my two wires going to F1 and F2. You can see that I've got two female spades connected to those two wires. So that's how it's connected. And if you want to learn more, I've got a bunch of videos on how to use SNET and how to use your computer. This is what an EEPROM looks like. And remember, for the indoor unit, you can get the option code to write this EEPROM from BRF Coder. For the outdoor unit, you need to contact Samsung Tech Support so that you can get the SRC file. Now, whenever I had the error code earlier, under operation mode, it said prohibited. And if it says prohibited, then there's a reason. And usually on this indoor unit data here, you're going to have an error code. It's going to be displayed right there. I don't have that anymore because of course we did the option right, right here. Okay. Now, if you're going to do the indoor option writer, you need to get your code from VRF coder. If you're going to do the outdoor, remember you need an SRC file. You need to contact Samsung and they're great about helping. So now I've got one outdoor unit, one indoor unit, got all the information displayed and I've got my operation mode as stop. So what I can do now is I can come over here to home. Okay. Go to controller, come over here, select. Oh, hard to see. Try to get you. Okay. Select. And then I'm going to turn my unit on, on. We're going to do cooling. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do heat. Run it up, run the temperature up to 86. It's on heating. Okay, so now my unit should come on. We'll see. The equipment just kicked on. Now it's working, it's running properly, and you can see. So now I'll begin to see the room temperature rise, and I'll be able to see the temperature of that indoor heat exchanger and we're in the heat mode so it's pretty cool when you don't have access to the indoor unit but you have a way to turn the equipment on and make sure it works and now i'm going to turn it off so using this controller in snet pro 2 so and then we'll disconnect whenever i'm done using it so this is awesome few things you need to know how to use SNET Pro 2. You need to know how to get option codes on VRF Coder. You need to know Samsung Tech Support's number. Equipment just kicked off. Yes. You need to know how to commission this type of equipment through the K buttons or through the wireless remote controller. There's usually a quick start guide, an installation manual that's very helpful that lets you know exactly how to commission this type of equipment. So the information's there. All you have to do is search and be willing to look and learn and you are going to do great. I really appreciate you watching today's video. If you need help, you need tech support from me, you need my phone number, you need my email, click the join button. Become a member. Let me know and I will send you my email if you've joined and I'll give you my phone number as well so that I can help you with your problem, help you to find a solution with your project. I am here to help. 
Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. Definitely leave a comment if you've got a question because questions can become content. I do look at these questions and I do try to make time to do videos, especially if you're a member. I've got a bunch of members only videos on how to size equipment, duck work, sales training if you want to learn how to go to somebody's house and look professional and be professional and actually be able to add value, transfer your knowledge to the customer. I've got videos for you to help you with your HVAC career. Quick guide for installer. The quick start guide is what I called it earlier. All right, so we've got commission the unit, run smart install. So you're basically with the unit in the standby mode, you're gonna push the power, the mode, and the set button for four seconds. It's gonna run through the smart install. It says it takes 13 minutes. And after that, it'll give you an error message it will be displayed or it'll be successful and then you can operate the equipment. I wanted to show you that just in case you're not familiar. Some units, you use the K buttons, but I'll show you in the outdoor unit, this one doesn't have the K buttons. And there is the indoor wall mount air handler. Really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and run the unit with the remote controller. So, power button, we'll go heating. 81. I'll show you the outdoor unit, give you a better view of it. You only need a Phillips screwdriver to take the cover panel off, and you can see there's no K button. There's no buttons to push for commissioning on this unit. So, very good install though. They did a good job. Just in case you were curious, this building is about 30 by, well, you saw that, 30. So 30 by 30, 900 square foot, and we've got that two ton unit, and we've got foam insulation, and that unit's gonna knock it out of the park, even though we've got pretty large ceiling area. So 1,000 square foot, two ton unit, pretty big ceiling. This is my laser measuring distance tool here, and it's a Bosch. Uh, GLM 50C just in case you want to know check out the link in the description I'll have it down there for if you guys want it if you want more videos like this check out my playlist HVAC tips for technicians if you want to learn how to size mini splits I've got a members only video on how to size mini splits and I've also got a bunch of guides so if you do join I'll send you all those guides and I've got one guide on mini split sizing I've also got resistance charts so that you can check the sensors on these mini splits you've been watching HVAC tips for technicians I'm Tad and I'll keep you cool if you let me